Rise Up. We discuss the growing number of believers around the world. The global community is expanding, and the people are rising up in support of Abba al Sadiq the Ka'im. Next, the history of our community and an in depth discussion on the milestones we have reached here in the United Kingdom. Then, Miracles of the Mahdi. We take a look at the wonders of God through the works of the riser Abba al Sadiq in a fascinating account by Brother Joseph al al Mahdi. And finally, Medicine of the Mahdi's, a world of discovery in healing and medicine for mind, body, and soul. This is Rise Up. Good morning. Welcome to Rise Up. My name is Irfan Alamgir. And we are excited to be presenting to you the glad tidings of the appearance of the Savior of Mankind, Abdullah Hashim, about as Sadiq. Uh, we are coming to you as his companions, as missionaries, as a people that present his teachings and his humane principles to the world at large in a time where the world is sorely in need of some uh, humane principles and some structure and uh, some order. We're looking around us and in different aspects, we find that the world is crumbling and it is in a state of devastation, whether it be natural disasters, wars and rumors of war, whether it be famine, disease, drought, you name it, things are not looking so great at the moment, but that was prophesied to be the case according to scripture for the appearance of the Savior, right? Really is, and uh, we have updates on the uh, Storm Milton. It is now battering uh, Florida, the state of Florida and the United States. It is creating uh, these uh, tornadoes, and uh, there is so much damage that's already been inflicted. And these are signs from God, signs that we must contemplate over, and these are meant to make us reflect, mm. reflect upon the times that you live in. There are many people around the world who are beginning to question the, uh, the system that governs them and beginning to see and look for alternative uh, solutions. And uh, you need not look any further because we are here to give you glad tidings that that solution has been offered in the form of a manifesto to which is healing for all of the ills of humanity. Uh, it is called the Manifesto of the Mahdi by Abba as Sadiq, the riser of the family of Muhammad. And this is something that uh, you can download for free on our website, Alia. That's right. Several languages. In several different languages. And it is something that you could read in a day and really, really digest its contents because in it is the roadmap to building the divine just state, a state where all of humanity can flourish and not just a select few benefiting from the suffering of the many. Uh, the, the world has been waiting for some form of a solution. And uh, we've talked before on this show about how there is that state of apathy that sort of um, starts to be seen in the people and in the society and a sort of hopelessness and helplessness to uh, already present systems. And people think that these are the only options they have. And, and uh, we have discussed it before, but in light of that perspective, we find men who believe that they are with the spirit of God, such as Pope Francis, yes. uh, basically telling people that they need to choose between two options of evil as quoted by him, right? Yeah. He's the one who calls them evil. This is headline news. Yes. And he said that. And he said you should be able to choose one of them and, uh, you know, what can we do about it? This is life, basically. Well, we are people who believe in God and we believe in faith. And faith has nothing to do with having to choose evil. If that had been the case, then Moses would not have gone and fought for his people to be freed from the hands of Pharaoh. Or Abraham would not have stood against Nimrod. Or Imam Hussein would have allowed that Yazid continue his caliphate and would have probably pledged his allegiance to him and let him continue doing what he wanted to do. But that is not the way of God. That is not the way of the Spirit. So for Pope Francis or anyone else out there who believes that um, this is it and there is no other way, uh, maybe he himself should also be heeding this message and this uh, important piece of information, which is there is a godly alternative. And not believing in a godly alternative is lacking in faith. Yes, Ali, and yesterday uh, we ended the show on a high because we received a call by a brother called Muhammad from Brooklyn, uh, in the United States and he picked up the phone and he was willing to put his neck forward 
and ask questions and say uh, uh, what he is seeing in the world as a state of chaos and disorder. And he asks questions. Let's do more of that. If you're watching us right now, whether on YouTube Live, whether on our satellite channel that is going out to the entire continent of Africa or Europe, and you think that there is something to it when we say only a man appointed by God can become a just ruler for the benefit of the entirety of humanity, if you believe in that concept, then let's get the manifesto of the Mahdi out in front of us and let's go through it chapter by chapter, page by page, point by point, and you tell us where there is a, a deficiency in terms of its logic, in terms of its uh, philosophy of mutual benefit and the benefit of the human race and brotherhood and unity and peace and prosperity and all of these things that ensue from implementing three simple steps, which is finding a leader, following a covenant, and building that community that then goes on to build the divine just state. It is really three layers uh, that we have to build together. Uh, we have to find and support the leader appointed by God. We, know how, we need to know how to recognize him. And this is explained very lucidly by Abba Sadiq. And once you do this, you will reach to the same conclusion. If you are a logical, sentient human being who can follow rational arguments, you will reach the conclusion that this is the only way. We have tried all the other ways and they have failed abysmally. And the idea of following a man such as Abdullah Hashim Abba Sadiq is that it is an all-encompassing solution. This is not a solution for your spiritual growth alone or for your uh, in improvement in your knowledge or an increase in your knowledge. He's not simply a teacher who has a lot of facts in his head that he can present to you. He is this, the solution to the problem. And he is the solution to every problem. There are global issues out there right now uh, that people don't know what to do. They're scratching their heads and looking at each other and shrugging and saying, well, this is what it is. What can we do? And people have unfortunately started believing that the situation is just a futile one. We have to allow that the 1% decide everything and we have yes. to be underneath them. And there is, this is how the ecosystem of our human society functions. Yes. But it's not the case because if it were the case, then there would be no need for God to have sent the prophets and messengers of old. Yes. Clearly, God had a different plan. And that plan included a lot more than simply uh, in improving the spiritual life of an individual and teaching them how to meditate and how to reach nirvana. To reach nirvana or to reach paradise is something that you achieve and accomplish here on this very plane and in this very lifetime if you so choose to do it. If you choose to find the Spirit of God and actually be with Him by His side and live with Him. How could life not be a paradise if you were right next to God's Spirit, if you were living by his side and supporting him, how could life be anything other than Eden? Exactly. Eden is the natural consequence of putting God's caliph in charge. Uh, this is what we're calling for. And it doesn't take long. Let's, I'll ask you a question. You live in the world. Look around you. Are the systems that govern you, whether it's the educational system, the health system, the economic system, do you think these are just systems? I mean, let's go through one that I'm very familiar with, which is the healthcare system. I was a medical doctor in the world and I worked as a general practitioner and my job was basically to manage the chronic illnesses of society. And when I was working, I was seeing that the patients that make up the majority of those who require healthcare are those with chronic diseases. A patient is usually in hospital for a couple of days and then they're discharged into the community. Now, once they're discharged, that's where I used to come in. And our, my job was to keep them out of hospital, mm -hmm. keep them well enough so that they don't go to hospital and put a burden on the healthcare system. But at the same time, I had to keep them just you know, healthy enough that they wouldn't return to hospital. And this was my job. And it was quite a, uh, a realization that happened after working for a few years and my that idealism the, the, the reason I chose to be a doctor and become a medic was to help people flourish so that they would never need to go see a doctor. This is really uh, at the heart of what we're teaching. And this is the same thing that the Mahdi teaches, that you can live healthy, long, prosperous lives and never need to be on a single medicine. But what I was told to do in my work is to keep people on these medicines. 
for the rest of their lives, whether it be a statin for cholesterol, or why aren't we talking about uh, consuming a predominantly plant-based diet? Mm. I was told to keep people on uh, things for diabetes, drugs like metformin that you may be taking. I mean, diabetes is prevalent all over the world and it's increasing in number. Metabolic syndrome is running rampant through the West and the East. And why are we not telling these people to do certain types of exercise that no longer requires them to take these medicines? And slowly but surely, I recognize that there are people, malevolent elements, dark forces, call it what you want, who are at the top teaching us and telling us to keep the people on these medicines, monitoring them for the side effects of these medicines, serious things like kidney failure and chronic kidney disease, and keep them on the medicines for as long as possible. And that didn't sit right with me in my heart, and it caused me to reevaluate my life and see that there is something systemically wrong with the way that we're doing things. Mm -hmm. And the model of the healthcare that the Mehdi promotes is completely different. It is that motto of prevention is better than cure. Let's keep ourselves healthy. Let's have as much as possible mineral-rich food that is in our environment and uh, consume your vitamins through food predominantly and let food be thy medicine so that you never get sick in the first place. Meditate, lead healthy lifestyles. All these things that the Mahdi teaches and promotes is what will be the healthcare system in the divine just state. And actually, a vision of the divine just state is hospital, the hospitals in the divine just state would essentially just be trauma centers because accidents can happen, trauma can happen, injuries can happen, and that would be uh, the extent of the involvement of the wow. hospitals. All chronic diseases would be completely eliminated from the face of the earth because the Mahdi has knowledge of all things and medicine is just one of them. I mean, it's, uh, that's just one aspect of a divine just state. And it's so exciting to hear that a world could look like that where you don't have to see people suffering from cancer or uh, other horrible diseases Popping that right 20 now... 20 pills, exactly. you know, different pills. And even simpler diseases that have no cures, like what oh, yeah. you mentioned. Diabetes is a terrible one, but people don't know what to do. They just... I think that you're... We're living in a world where we're treating symptoms all yes. the time, whether it be in the world of medicine or the problem with climate change or the problem with the wars and rumors of war or whatever it might be. People are trying to fix symptoms or like, uh, let's say, cover up these holes that keep appearing and stopping the water from leaking out from the dam. But that's not the issue. The issue is something much greater on the other side that has to be addressed. Yes. And I don't think people really know how to do it right now. And I think that people have it's, it's given up almost, right? Like they don't really know what's next. It's, it's totally impossible. They've created this state where they want to keep you stressed out. Mm. Okay, you have to pay the mortgage, you have to pay the student loan. There's, the economic system is totally a corrupt uh, uh, capitalism we all know about. They want to keep you busy and stressed and then give you occasionally a World Cup, some kind of entertainment, amusement to keep you busy and distracted whilst you age and the stress levels go through the roof and you develop hypertension and diabetes, and then they provide you with a solution to it, which is a pill that you have to take for the rest of your life. A pill that has side effects, a pill that needs another medicine for the side effect of that pill. And it's it, ridiculous. In it, this it, day and age, How can be that anybody, way. Alia, in that state flourish? You right? Can't. How can you even have time to sit down and just say, I'm going to look around, wow, look at this, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. No, people are stressed because the children are, are, their children are addicted to drugs. Both parents have to work because income tax is at 40 to 50 percent in most of the Western countries. And then, of course, there's value-added tax or all these different taxation systems. In this environment, it is not even possible to think and reflect. And we always ask the people to think and reflect, but my heart goes out to the people of because course. I was also in this tornado, this whirlwind of, of just distraction and stress. And, but you know, to come to that, the, there is a pa place where you can go to, and that is in the eye of the storm, in the center of it. And you can reach that center of tranquility by calling out to God. There is a God and he does listen and he surely responds to the sincere voice of his servant. God heard Jonah in the belly of a whale. This is what I believe. This is what all Muslims, Jews and Christians believe in the ocean, in the darkness of the night when he was crying out to him and he saved Jonah. 
Just like that, we too have to get into that eye of the storm and call out to God and ask him to show us where his messenger is in this time. Where is the Mahdi? Where is Christ? Mm. Where is the Maitreya? Where, are, where is this promised savior? Because our scriptures tell us that they're coming. So where are they? Who's going to tell you other than God? Cry out to God in the darkness of the night. If you wake up just synchronistically at three or four in the morning and you're like, why did I wake up at this time? Don't just go and eat something and go back to sleep. This is the time where you pray to God. In Islam, it's called Salat al-Layl, which is where you pray at these early hours of the night. And this is a really good time to have that one-on-one conversation with God, with your Creator, with the one who cares and loves you 70 times more than your mother. 70, of course, is referring to infinity. It's a number with, it's an, with it's different meanings. It's an Arabic meanings. Uh, terminology, right? It just means infinitely. It doesn't infinitely. mean actually 70, but infinitely. Exactly. And if God isn't love, what is God? And do you think he would not listen to his child crying out to him in the night, asking him for guidance? Have you done this yet? Or are you watching something that the malevolent elements control in their media uh, uh, to distract you uh, with the uh, chattels of deception that is the material world? Only God can save us. Ask God, turn to God, and I have absolutely no doubt that if you do that, he will definitely bring you back here because this is where the messenger of God resides and his name is Abdullah Hashim Abba Asadik. And there's also this distinction, isn't there? There are two kinds of people in the world right now There's who believe in God. The majority of people who believe in God expect that the Savior or the Messiah or the Mahdi have to come to them and solve their issues for them and be at their behest and appear the way they expect them to. And all the trials and tribulations that the individual goes through in their life, they would be then blaming God for it, putting the burden on him to fix them, and also expecting that the Mahdi or the Messiah or whoever they're waiting for come and and save them and relinquish them of their issues. Whereas there is also another group of people, mm. a smaller group of people who understand that if you are actually looking for God, you must find him. You have to seek him out. And, and once you've found him, you have to run to him and be with him. And that's a very, uh, a much smaller number of people who understand that. But that's the true way of, of expecting uh, the treatment to be between or the relationship between, uh, to be between you and your Lord or you and your king. Uh, a king does not come running to his subjects. The subjects are meant to go to the king and to support him in his mission. But unfortunately, uh, we're seeing that it's mostly the case where people either blame God for their situation that they're in mm. or they say that God has to come and help me out. Then I'll know it's God. Then I'll know it's the Mahdi. Then I'll know it's the Messiah. But why don't you see it the other way around? Mm. That's that's something that uh, that is a yes. sad thing that we've noticed. Sometimes we will talk to people while we're we're interacting with them, while we're giving them dawah, we're telling them, "Hey, the Mahdi's appeared. Do you know about this?" And they will say, "Well, then why doesn't he fix everything mm. right now?" And yes. then I'll think about you know yeah, sure. uh, praising him or saying, "I actually believe in you." Right. That's a great point you make, Ali. And there is some. I think. Okay, I think we might have a caller in a little bit. But yeah, Alia, just to finish off on this very important point that you raised, you have to be proactive. Okay, so when I say pray to God and ask him to guide you to his messenger in this time, that's you taking the first step. Then if God responds to you, it is your absolute duty to take that first step. God took the Israelites out of Egypt in the Exodus and they arrived at the gates of Jerusalem and then they were told to go fight and reclaim the land of God from the uh, Canaanites that resided there and what did the children of Israel uh, famously say in the Quran okay you and your Lord go fight and we will remain here precisely they did not want to be involved in the work they wanted to allow God to do it for them and allow Moses to do it for them but then what is the point to be a godly people is to be there for him to be there for God and with God And that is the covenant. That is the two-way contract. Uh, And it's not right to have this entitlement that most people have um, grown to believe that they're allowed to have. And in fact, it's also very heartbreaking because the reverence and obedience that that is given to the scholars of religion who have no authority given to them by God, those scholars are receiving so much, so much reverence, so much adoration. 
and they are not entitled to it. The only allegiance that we should be having is to God alone, and He is the one we revere and obey. And I believe we have a caller right now on Skype. Salam alaikum. How are you, sister? I'm doing well. Alhamdulillah. We're we're really happy to hear you right now, and we're excited to be talking to you. Can you just give us your name and where you're from? My name is Bulunga Ina, and I am from the Maldives. All right, amazing. And you are, uh, I believe you're one of our believing sisters, aren't you? You're a believer in the in the Ahmadi religion of peace and light and in the call of Abu Sadiq? Yes, yes, I am. Would you like to share your journey with us? Uh, yeah. So, like, uh, I come from a Sunni background, right? But um, we're, not, we're not like an Arab country, so... Uh, yeah, but, but it's still, still like, like, you know, Sunni country here. here. Uh, uh, we're not allowed to be anything else, right? right? So, <laughs> we grew up, like, uh, believing all of these things. And, uh, like, I, I had, had questions even when I was a child. But the thing is, when, like, like coming from a background like ours, the scholars and the teachers and everyone don't really encourage you to question anything, right? right? Right. In, In fact, fact, if you see, see like, like you're like, like you know, a kufar if you question anything. So, <laughs> like uh, the indoctrination in like, like their children, children and everything, right? And, right? and then they, they don't, don't like uh, they, they just uh, make, make you see like you're not a believer and that you have no faith if you ask any questions, questions right? right? Hmm. So. Like, uh, for me also, it was the same. I had all these questions, questions and things, but I was too afraid to question anything because of, like, feeling like it might lead to not believing in God or whatever, which is fundamentally a wrong thing, right? Because yeah. every religion out there, basically, basically every religion out there is always telling you seek knowledge, do your research, all of that. But then when it comes to the actions, it's then anything but. Yes. Okay, that, that's like the mindset, I suppose, isn't it? I think it's very prevalent, yeah. especially in Sunni Islam, correct? Yes, and uh, yes. The, in certain of these states, it's very difficult to voice your opinion, to spread anything of the truth, and it's immediately clamped down on. So, uh, you know, well done for having the courage yeah. to think independently. In fact, in fact like, like in, in my, my country, country, right, right uh, there is a say which uh, those, like, like which basically means to like the more like you study so much that you become a kufar, which is a very ridiculous thing to think about, right? Because there is like this fear mongering of do not read any other books or anything. We are not even allowed to like have any books from other scriptures like the Bible or whatever in our country. Even the university, if you have any of those books, but. Even, Even in the Quran, it says that those are like books of the previous prophets. prophets. Yes, they have the distortions, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't look at them. Of course. It doesn't mean that we should like cover our ears and close our eyes and like just not look at anything. At least we need to investigate, right? Absolutely. No, for sure. So you were raised in that kind of uh, sort of like a culture where you had to not research, you weren't encouraged to read. In fact, you were encouraged to not read and look into religion. Uh, what happened to you then? How is it that you came to the point where you actually found the Imam of the time? So what happened with me was that uh, actually it was one of my cousins and I really close to that cousin and he was the one who actually uh, made me aware about this all, right? From a very long time ago, he would, would like do his independent research and things. And then like, like since, since a very very long time ago, uh, he, he first, first told me that he converted to Shia, and, and then like later on he would be telling me a little bit about the call. Hmm. You know, in the beginning I was really afraid to like even pay much attention to all of it, right? To be honest, like uh, I didn't really even know about the sex of Islam or anything like that because, like I said, it's not really yeah because you weren't allowed to even, study it. Like, yeah, which is very funny considering the fact that we have like this uh, obligatory subject in schools also, which is Islam, right? But then again, they only teach you what they want you to know, and then they just brush over the other topics. For example, I didn't know anything about 
like you know what happened to the lineage of the prophet and things like that right and anyway this cousin of mine he will tell me a bit about you know the new things that he learned and everything and i have listened and then uh later it was uh around the time when the goal of the wise hadn't really released yet but like uh the there were like a few chapters out and then they were reading the chapters on the talk yeah this is and when the chapters I, were being released individually right like before it was fully published yes. okay yes so uh, i would go on the talk sessions and then i would listen to the readings and ask questions and the things i had and i watched the return series as well which was amazing and like the the more i learned about the religion the more like things made sense you know questions that i had in my mind which i hadn't dared to voice before like i got an answer for all of all of that right some of the things were really really hard for me to take because of the things that i had believed growing up all the time but uh like you know like within even a day after like when i first heard it and i found it difficult The next, the next day also, also I would like think of a reason why it made complete sense, sense right? right? It's, it's not, not meant to be like, you know, it's, it's not, not meant, meant to be the way that they picture it in our head. head. It, it never was, even in history. That's, that's what everybody had to go through, right? right? Like, like in, in the, the times of the previous prophets and all, all of the other prophets and everything, like all of the people who followed them had to go through the same struggle. as you know that it would be different for us this doesn't really make sense when we consider like it happened again and again and again, 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 again right, right? There, there's like, like evidence that, that it happened multiple times like history times. repeats itself a lot no. yes, yes exactly, exactly. And there's no so evidence that everybody just like it was just as it is now right that things are just the way we live growing up so like from the pilot session and then like uh, i had some dreams, dreams and like, like I, still i still don't know what to make of the dreams i had and everything and also like very very clear signs right uh, i remember one time this was uh, i remember one time uh, they were talking about the mini sihara and the middle sihara right in one of the talk sessions and i during those days i would like uh, go to when i was going to work commuting to work i would listen to the guru horn and like with the translation and um one day that day like uh, i was like i was listening to a talk session, session and we were talking about the sihara and like, like leaving it everything like up to the hands of god right mm. if we are unsure and by that point i was already pretty convinced by the call but like i uh, i was thinking that i was going to do it yeah right and i was, i like to like, make the intention, intention that, that i will do it and what, what happened, happened was uh, uh like it's no coincidence, coincidence right? right what happened was that uh, when, when i was leaving that day i was, I was going to listen to the guru again, again on my way back, back home right mm-hmm. and then this sura i was listening to the sura in order but then that at that particular moment it happened that the sura that was supposed to play next was really downloaded, downloaded so, so i had to go to the next sura right okay. and then i started listening to that sura and then um i was crossing the road and like i was really paying attention to like you know the sura i was listening to like it was kind of playing in the background at the moment right because i was uh, like focusing on crossing the road but then i heard this one verse so 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 clearly right and this verse was like um hold on a minute Yeah. Uh, uh this verse goes, goes like then and perhaps you would change yourself, yourself to be over them all the time if, if they, they do not believe in this message and our wow. service. Subhanallah. And I literally <laughs> just got goosebumps, <laughs> right? I just got goosebumps right now like, hearing you <laughs> read it like that. That was Wow, what a what a, <laughs> an amazing verse to to hear in a moment where you're contemplating whether or not this is the truth. Exactly. It's like like, like God, God will not steer you wrong, wrong right? right? So true. Like, you, you you have the intention of asking God. If anybody like wants to search for the truth, then you just need to ask God, and that's all. 
That's and so like, true. It just came so tightly. No coincidence or anything. I made that intention and like literally 30 minutes after that, I was listening to the surah. And like, like I mentioned, like it skipped over the surah, right? So like there's some, like literally no coincidences. It was such a clear, clear answer, right? It is extremely clear. Mm. I think the synchronicity that you yeah. are mentioning, I mean, how beautiful is that? We see this a lot yes. in the different um, journeys of the believers and the synchronicities and the, the so-called coincidences, as people put it, are uh, they're uncanny. We cannot deny them because they're so clear. They are so clear. And uh, hearing you speak, exactly. sister, it reminds me of the names of God, Al-Mujib, which is the one who responds, and oh, Al-Kareem, because he responds and is so generous in his response, and he really received that. Yes. So was that your turning point? Was that the point where you decided, I have to pledge my allegiance, this is it? Uh, for me, it was like, I, I already believed, right? But then, uh, like... Uh, it was that confirmation. I believed, but I hadn't really decided to pledge my allegiance because I kept thinking to myself that I needed to like do the research and everything, right? I needed to, like, there would be no going back Good. for me from that Yes, this is exactly what you need to I do. I needed to do that, right? Yeah, but uh, personally, I would say that I wasted a lot of time doing that research because I, I'd already confirmed it. I'd gotten my answer from God and I kept thinking that, I had to look into this and that and all of that. But ah, okay. when you really think about it after, like everything is already out there in the apparent. I already believe in it. And like I got my confirmation. I guess I was just too afraid to like, you know, not have done enough before going in, right? Mm -hmm. So it took me some time before I did pledge my allegiance. You know, sister, but, there is um, a there is a saying by Imam Ahmed al Hassan from him his piece, the first Mahdi the Yamani. He said that investigate and do all the due diligence you need to do. But once you make a decision, then don't turn back on that decision. And I think this is an important point for us to contemplate on and for our audience to know, is that you should definitely research and scrutinize the evidence that reaches you and really reach that stage of confirmation, which you did mm. at a certain point. And then the Imam says, make a decision and then stick to that decision. Don't go back and forth as many politicians do uh, who are called flip-floppers flip and they make this, uh, you know, they go back and forth. And then the reason is because once that happens, you become like a mouse in the hands of a cat and you get played around by the shaitan. Exactly. And you certainly don't want to reach that stage where once you've made that decision, I've done my research. I am absolutely confident that the will of the Prophet Muhammad is true and his promise is true, and that he is the messenger of God. And he told me that the name of the first Mahdi is Ahmed, the second one is Abdullah, then I am not going to doubt the words of my prophet, because he himself, with his blessed mouth, peace and blessings be upon him, said, those who follow this will never go astray. Exactly. Yes, exactly. And uh, like... For me, it was the same process, right? I like I did not want to at any point have any excuse to turn back, right? So that was a very major thing for me. And then also, like I like I mentioned, uh, it was a cousin of mine who introduced me to the call, right? So obviously, uh, the fact that he's in the call would be very important to me as well. Mm -hmm. But then I even then I would have no excuse to leave the call, right? Right. You see, sister, another phenomenon that we've witnessed in this call is that sometimes somebody else will come and inform us about this call. Mm. They'll open the door for us, but then unfortunately, they themselves don't enter. I'm not saying this is the case with your cousin, but I'm just saying in general, it's it a phenomenon. Happen, yeah. It can happen, right? So, and the well, reason... I think that the call just got cut there, perhaps? Oh, okay. All right, we're just going to have to wait for our dear sister to reconnect. But uh, so far, I think that listening to that very inspirational and Journey, motivating yeah. story. Wow. And it's it's just one of the many, many stories we have heard. Hundreds upon hundreds of people who have that strange uh, connection suddenly with the divine where God is leading them on that journey towards him because they are seeking him out. Yes. And it's so incredible because suddenly he becomes very present in your life. And he's you can hear him everywhere and see him everywhere. And you're... You're looking for him, and he suddenly appears to you in different in different ways. Yes. 
The call is back. All right, we're back here with our sister. Yes, I'm so sorry. No, absolutely fine. So please go ahead. We were excited to hear what happens next in the in the story. So you, at this point, you were saying that you had done so much research and you had all these signs from God and you kind of already were a believer, but now it was even more enforced for you, correct? Yeah, and like uh, basically I did istihara again, right? I would say that the other one was an istihara, I didn't like, like go through the motions, motions of actually doing it, right? Mm. Because I had the intention and I did receive the answer, right? But yeah. then I thought to myself, I can't give myself any excuse whatsoever. And then I did istihara again. And then I received another answer and it was um, uh, along the same lines as before, right? That like, he is the Mahdi and it just confirmed for me everything. And then just that night I pledged my allegiance. There is no going back after pledging allegiance, right? No, exactly. There's no going back after pledging allegiance because it's a promise. It's an oath that yes. we make to God and a true man never breaks his promise or a true human yes. never breaks their promise and especially not to the divine. So of course, what you said yeah. there, very, very good words from you. Yes, I definitely want to live up to the words I said when I made my origin, when I made my pledge, right? That I would live and die upon this call. And that's exactly what I hope to do. God bless you, sister. I'm interested in asking you a few questions, actually, now about yes, your faith. Yes, sister. Uh, tell yeah. us about, in terms of the School of Divine Mysteries, that I'm sure you are watching the lectures of the Naim of Asadik and the Goal of the Wise, yeah. that beautiful gospel that he has written. Uh, what would you say has been the most impactful teaching from it or what has inspired you the most from the knowledge of Abu Sadiq? For me personally, uh, I would say that obviously the, like everything there is an inspiration, right? Hmm. But I guess what made the most impact to me was the concept of reincarnation as well as the fact that, you know, Satan being the creator of the humans and of the flesh and of this world, right? Because uh, you know, when it came to reincarnation, I always used to wonder about this, right? About like how it's unfair for different people bo being born in like different circumstances and everything and being unable to find God. Mm -hmm. Yet they're very, very good people, yet they're condemned to hell just because they didn't like know of God, right? Mm -hmm. And I would ask that question to like other people like the Sunni people here and everything, right? And the answers I always got were that, like, you know, God would always, like, find a way to give them the message, right? Mm. But it still didn't seem very fair to me because there are people who do die without knowing, right? Good people. And the fact that, you know, everyone has all these chances and everything, that makes sense. It confirms everything, right? That's said in the Quran and the other gospels, right? Mm. That God gives so many chances and that, you know, like everything is fair everyone has equal opportunity you don't really have an excuse at that point right and the concept of reincarnation just made sense everything just fit it clicked right and as as for like the uh, the creator of this world and the flesh being safe and it also made sense because this was also like a thought that i struggled with but when i didn't dare to voice right i always like, this was something that really bothered me the thought that God just created us and put us on this earth to go through this test and go through all of this suffering and like just as kind of like you know a test like a play a game something like that right because that's what it's made out to be like in the other religions and everything right and that always bothered me because that doesn't seem like something a merciful God would do right but yeah I just didn't re like really think about that because I think it, like, you know, it would lead me, lead me down a path of disbelief, right? Mm. But when you think about the fact that it was Satan who was a creator, that makes sense. Like, God would never create something like this world that is so imperfect and filled with, like, such evil and injustice, right? Mm. Yeah, well so true. And then when you have people like uh, Richard Dawkins writing books like The Selfish Gene, he actually says this thing that the world around us is a, it's actually a very selfish place. Um, and this is yeah. one of the big truths mm. that when you first uncover it, some people are very disturbed by it. Disturbed by but uh, the evidence is there for those to see. Especially as of late, right? Like, 
in the past few years, the everyone's just being encouraged to like focus on yourself, forget about everybody else, just like do you and don't think about the suffering of mm. others. And that's just, it, it's just such a wrong concept, right? And yeah, like the people satanic. are like so, yeah, the people are like so numb to everything going on around them because of all the indoctrination and everything like that they're being said through all of the social media and society and everything, right? just close your eyes and pretend nothing is happening but like people need to really wake up the world is like only getting worse it's not gonna stay the way it is either even if you think it doesn't affect you right now it is affecting you but like it's still just going to get worse exactly exactly well said and i think that this is such an incredible wake-up call from yourself to every anyone listening to your voice right now because in order to um, enforce your faith, you received knowledge from the Qaim. And interestingly, while that knowledge might seem disturbing to many, you actually took it as uh, something that strengthened your belief in God and it strengthened your your ability to want to support God and your ability to want to be there for the Qaim of Asadiq, simply because that knowledge made a lot of sense to you. And this is, again, yeah. a good indication to others that they should be looking into these teachings and watching those le those lectures and reading the book as well. Yeah, because uh, like I mentioned, it's not that I didn't like come across things that were hard for me to accept when I first heard about this call, right? Of course, like when I grow up believing in all of these things and then all of these things are like subverted and like I learned that it, it was all a lie, it's very, very hard to accept and everything, right? But then like, like I mentioned, it was very, very difficult for me. And I was like questioning whether it could be true considering that, you know, it's saying the opposite of everything I used to believe it, right? Mm. But then like, like I mentioned, like literally the next day, I am sure that this was the guidance I was receiving from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because literally the next day it would come to my, like just a random thought would pop up into my head that even in the time of the prophet, prophet in the time of Jesus, in the time of Moses, they all went through the same thing, right? where like the people would be like they had to go against everything that their people believed in at the time and they would say that you're making an innovation you're like reversing everything that we used to believe in you're like making new making up new laws and everything it was never ever different so why should it be any different now absolutely so sister you're someone who considers uh, herself to be a very staunch and strong supporter of Abbas Sadiq from him is peace Many out there are listening, they hear us talk about Abu Sadiq. We would love for you to be uh, given that opportunity as well to actually yeah. describe who he is to anyone out there who's listening and watching. Uh, maybe your words would inspire them to look more into the call. How would you describe the riser Abu Sadiq to the people? He is the one that was sent by God. He is the one that everyone has been waiting for and he is the only solution. And if anybody out there who believes in a God, right? If anybody out there believes in a God and wants to worship that God, they need to look for him because it is only through knowing him that we will be able to worship God. Because just like, you know, what Satan went through, he wanted to worship God in his own way, but God wanted to be worshiped in God's way. Yes. And we need to look for the way that God wants to be worshiped not the way that we want to worship him. That's the thought that comes from Satan. And to do that, we need to find a man sent by God. Look into your scriptures, look into other scriptures. It doesn't matter what background you were born into, right? It doesn't automatically make it true. Investigate it. Like, the background you were born into, like, if the fact, if your whole faith rests on the fact that you were born into that background, that doesn't really hold any water, right? You need a foundation first. So look into your own religious background, look into the other backgrounds. And if you do, if you like look into everything with an open mind, then you will find him. He is the one that we've been waiting for. And he is the one who can lead us to worshiping God. Very well said, very beautifully put. Hear ye, hear ye, oh people <laughs> of the earth. Uh, very well said. Uh, sister, we've really enjoyed listening to your story and we've been uh, we're very honored and blessed that you actually took the time to come on the platform, share your journey with the world. And uh, definitely your words have reached the hearts of those out there who are sincere and who are sincerely looking towards finding God, just as you did. Uh, and I hope uh, that we can actually have you back on the show again very soon. Thank you so much. 
Inshallah, sister. Thank you so much. God Thank bless you. you. Salam alaikum. So that that is a, such an inspiring experience to actually come across believers around the world mm. who who really firmly believe in this call and have gone through that journey. And and imagine the the investment, the time, the effort that has that people take to find God. It, it would be very strange that God wouldn't answer them or reach out to them and find them back. It wouldn't. It? I love hearing these sto- uh, these um, you know from from people who have newly found this call because. It really is that honeymoon period where God in his infinite grace, he opens the doors of his mercy and he showers you with dreams and verses of the Quran and everything. It's like synchronicities. It's like being liberated from a prison that you've been in your entire life. It's such a expansive spiritual experience. It's like that spiritual high and yeah. God in his mercy, he, he, he just covers you with all these signs that are designed to make you reach that conviction. And it is an important phase to go through and it's a necessary phase because the phase after it is what the Imam calls work and work and work until you are breathless. Absolutely. That inspiration that God has given you must be put into action. And um, we really do hope, sister, God bless you and thank you so much for coming on the show live and, and talking about your journey. Um, we hope that you continue to, in your own way, whatever way that you can, by whatever means you have, to spread the call in the land that you live in. Okay, so we have another caller on the line. It's Muhammad from Brooklyn. He's back from uh, from our call with him yesterday. All right, we're going to be waiting. He's going to be on the line very soon. Uh, it's, it's so refreshing to, to speak to open-minded people who are on the same page of um, making the world a better place and of defying those closed-minded ideas that people insist that we have to have those shackles on our mind. Uh, we, we love talking to people who believe in the same as we do, which is a better world. Yes. Muhammad, are you there on the line with us now? Assalamu alaikum, sister. Wa alaikum salam, brother. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. Thank you for asking. Uh, I'm happy to see you guys live again. I was waiting for you guys, actually. Oh, I welcome back. To God bless the you. Discussion we had yesterday. Thank you so much. I have a, a big question that I've been pondering on lately, and, and, and the big question that I'm, I ask myself is, how much of this could be metaphorical rather than literal? That we take all the text into literal sense when maybe Allah is trying to tell us. Because in Surah Al-Baqarah, when reading it. It says, believe in the Quran and believe in the scriptures prior to the Quran. Mm. So when we start opening up, like, let's just say the Bible, or we open up the Torah, and Jesus says, I am, meaning I am the Father and I am the Son. When we break that down, is he saying that the subconscious and the conscious become one? Could Allah be the consciousness of the human being? Because we we go into these mosques trying to seek knowledge. And one story that really um, hits me hard is the story of the guy that killed 99 people. He goes around and he tries to seek forgiveness and he walks into the mosque and he asks the imam and the imam was like, no, you're you're a sinner and he ends up killing him. And he, keep, he continues on walking this journey. And then finally he meets a guy that's in, in righteousness and he tells him because Allah is all forgiven and all knowing. And that was like the switch that the person needed. Because when we're reading such a text of the Quran, it says hypocrisy and it says this, we might take that as it speaking directly to us or it might steer us away, mm. if, if that's making any sense. No, I, I understand where you're coming from, brother. And I think that it's a, it's a very layered question that you've presented there. And I'd love to kind of break that down, if you don't mind, from our perspective. So our take on a matter uh, of the nature that you've presented, that perhaps most of what we read is metaphorical. Um, I would say that I totally agree with you that most of what we read has within it an inner and an outer meaning. And in Arabic, we call it the zahir and the batin, right? So there's always that inner meaning and then there's the outer meaning. The inner meaning is usually something that you really need a guide to interpret for you. And that is why we have uh, the 12 imams and how they would speak to their companions and break down these verses and in such incredible ways that people wouldn't really have connected on their own. So definitely the scriptures have an inner and an outer Um, Jesus, for example, when he says, I am, it's been interpreted that he's saying, I am the father and the son, but that wasn't really what he said. He said, I am. And whatever that means uh, is something that could be going into a different conversation. But the fact of the matter is that indeed there is an inner meaning 
and we should be seeking it. But we should also recognize, and this is our take on the matter, we should also recognize that there is a practical approach to religion as well. And that religion has to have a mission to it. It has to have a point to it. And God's point for religion was to create a world that was functioning properly. And that required a leader, that required a spirit from himself. Otherwise, why would he blow his spirit into Adam and then command creation to prostrate to Adam? Clearly, he wanted that caliph to exist on earth. So, yes, scripture can be metaphorical, and a lot of the times it is, but it's also quite literal. And in order to understand the metaphor, we would need to find that spirit of God that exists in a man. So that would be our general take on, on the point. Anything you'd like to add, Dr. Irfan, there? No, I would just say that, yes, the, there is actually a verse in the Quran that says there are some verses that are allegorical and others are very apparent. Mm. Uh, the key thing about this whole ar- the allegorical verses is this. One of the titles of the Ahlul Bayt, uh, the family of the Prophet Muhammad, is that they are the Safina the Najat, the Ark of Salvation, but they're also Misbal Huda. They are My the lanterns. I'm to cut you off. You keep coming in and out. Oh. You can't hear us? Can you hear us now? Did it just start happening or? I think there might be a technical issue there. Hello? Seem to have a connection problem. Can you hear us, Brother Muhammad? We can, I can hear you, but it's very staticky. Oh. Very staticky. We can hear you very clearly, yeah. so maybe it's uh, something that we need to deal with before we can maybe continue. Maybe some mics. Well, let's, let's try again. You were saying, Dr. Irfan. Yes, so I was just saying that these allegorical verses are supposed to be interpreted by, as Alia said, that spirit of God that was breathed into Adam. And that spirit is a light. It's like trying to read a book in a, on a pitch dark night. You can't read it yourself, but that light of God, that spirit of God that is in the vicegerent of God, be that Adam, Jesus, Moses, Muhammad, Abraham, or Rabbi As-Sadiq, is absolutely key to reading. You need light in order to read. Mm. And like that, the interpretation of these allegorical verses can only be deciphered by those equipped to do so. We have that man with us in our midst, and he is telling us what these allegorical verses mean, and only from him do we take its interpretation in this time. And the Imams of the Ahl Bayt have mentioned various numerous verses in the Quran that they tell us its interpretation in the allegorical verse. There are companions who say, oh, Imam, what does it mean in the Quran when it says this? And the Imam replies, it yeah. means this, this, and this. That is the true interpretation of the allegorical verses. It's not up for me or uh, Sister Alia or anybody else uh, who is not appointed by God in this day and age to say, we think it means this. It's not a matter for conjecture and opinion. The arrogance of the scholars of the end times is this, that they um, come up with their own theories, right? Right, They come up with their own interpretations. And this is usurpation of the right of God and his proof in every time. So as far as allegorical verses are concerned, take only from the men of God, people who are sent, like Jesus, for example, he is the true interpreter of the Gospels. Yeah, and by the way, on that note, I'd like to add very quick, I'm sure because you have read the scriptures, you must remember where Jesus said, I speak to you now in parables, but soon I will send to you one who will speak in a clear tongue that you will understand. Correct. Yes. Right. Yes. That means that there was meant to be a man who would come and actually start interpreting. And I'm not sure how much you have been watching um, our channel and if you've actually come across the lectures of the Riser of Asadik. But uh, a great chunk of his, his lecture series has to do with actually revealing the secrets in Scripture and the metaphors behind them. So if you haven't had a look at that, do go ahead and check that out as well. It's quite fascinating. I will do, my sister. Um... But the thing is, the, the reason why I, 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 I believe strongly in Islam is because of the one deity. And when I think about the one deity, I think about Allah subhanahu, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala when he, when he gave breath to the human being, meaning like the consciousness that we have, we're able to differentiate from right and wrong. Mm-hmm. However, we, we never choose the Godhead. We always choose the opposite for some reason. Because to step into the trueness of the Godhead means there's a lot of sacrifice, a lot of ego, coming to confinement with with death um yeah. there's so much that we can learn and, and I, i'm not sure if it's the programming that we're watching on tv or these little things that we're it's it, it says it like be wary like again if we take stuff that's literal metaphorically and we apply it into our day and day life the quran is the end all be all um 
it, it's very fascinating that most don't see it the way that we see it, subhanAllah. I think I, you're I, I'm right. Not, I'm not no righteous man. However, I try to walk on a righteous path, if that makes sense. I think that you're a researcher and that by itself is such a great um, thing to be in this time where people are actually encouraged not to research or not to read and they're, they're in the state of apathy where they don't even care about the truth. I think it's really wonderful that you're seeking it. And I agree with you that the Quran is absolutely filled with mysteries and knowledge that we could read for a lifetime and we wouldn't know all of it by the end of it. Um, and I also really encourage again that you check out The Goal of the Wise. That's another book that actually has within it some of the interpretation of some of the verses by the riser of Asadik. So it is worth a look. And if you are an avid researcher, then you'll find that you and ourselves actually hold a lot in common, I think. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say to you, Brother Muhammad, this that it's important to acknowledge the human being. And I think the part to which you're referring is different from the soul. That breath that was breathed into Adam was from the Holy Spirit of God. And this is the part of the human being that has that innate knowledge, that instinctive knowing. Uh, and the part that gets programmed, the part that often leads astray is the, is the thought, the emotional body, which some people call the ego or the nafs. And this mental emotional part of this, uh, the human uh, being is what is actually programmed by those who program. The Spirit of God that is in the proof of God, the Caliph of the time, is different to what every other human being has. That is why we are commanded to submit to Him and to obey Him. Because by ourselves, even though we have a soul, we need that Supreme Spirit that was in Adam, mm. to which the angels made prostration, for us to make that submission to Him. And then God commands Adam that he can now give the knowledge to the angels of things that they did not know of before. So you have to distinguish, you have to see the human being as a tripartite kind of being almost. So you've got body, mind and spirit. The spirit of God, the spirit of God is in that one individual in every day and age. And what we have is that ability to recognize him. Yeah. The souls that we have, our purpose is to recognize the proof of God in our time and obey him and submit to him in complete submission. As Abraham said, I surrender to the Lord of the worlds. The way in which you do that is you find that man that has the Spirit of God and you submit to him. Can I just add something very quick? Go Sorry, Go I'm going to quickly like interject. On the point that you made, Dr. Irfan, this is actually quite important to us because we like to really analyze what God himself is trying to tell us, especially when it comes to scripture. Now, if you look in the Holy Quran and you read the story, and I'm sure you're well versed in it, brother, where Adam is um, lifeless and God is saying, I'm going to blow my spirit into him. And when I do so, prostrate in obedience to him. Yes. And the angels did so, except for one entity, and that was Iblis, as exactly. we all know. And the reason Iblis didn't prostrate was why? Because he thought he knew better. Exactly. He believed, and he wasn't wrong, by the way, Iblis actually had a great amount of knowledge. He was one of the most knowledgeable uh, entities in that realm at the time. And he believed that because of his knowledge, he doesn't have to prostrate to Adam. He's better than him. Mm. So it's a dangerous game where we don't recognize the spirit and we believe knowledge might be enough. Yes. Is knowledge necessary? Absolutely. We are a people that call ourselves companions of the evidence. We run to knowledge. We take it wherever it may be. Yes. Fearlessly. But at the same time, we know that that we don't want to be the likes of Iblis who care more about the knowledge and less about where the spirit of God is. Do you know what I'm saying? We have that balance that we like to course, keep. Uh, so, SubhanAllah, your story just reminded me of Musa Salah, Salah, Salah Salam, when he went on the... Uh, With the, the Abdul Saleh. And, and, and he was seeking for... Um, exactly. Did you, you know that story, sister? Yes, with the Abdul Saleh, with the righteous servant. The three yes. incidents, and absolutely. He, in kept, Surah he, kept, he kept asking questions, and he was like, uh, you can't ask me these questions. And then he came to realization that people do... So yeah, it's coming full circle, this conversation. It really is. I'm really enjoying it. And again, brother, we really enjoy getting like-minded people like yourself who can relate to what we're saying. And uh, it, it's quite refreshing. SubhanAllah, I found you guys by accident. I was just on my YouTube <laughs> and it was like the Mahdi has arrived. So I clicked on it. I'm, I'm into these kind of... There is uh, no such thing as coincidence, brother. If you found us, there was something in you that uh, guided you. And Alhamdulillah for that. And it was a pleasure talking to you. It was a very... Um, interesting conversation, and I think we could uh, go on for many, many more uh, hours if we if we had the time. Thank you, my brother. I appreciate you guys. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam, brother Muhammad.
Uh, there you go. I mean, we're finding that there are people out there who are, and we know this. We know this, and the riser knows this. Abu Sadiq himself, he said it so many times. He said this world is full of good people, strong-hearted people, good-willed people who deserve better, and we have to be the ones who go forward and establish that. And we have to create that land, that sanctuary, where people can can prosper and flourish spiritually, mentally, physically. This is what we want. Uh, let's go to a quick one-minute video that we have, a quick compilation. It could have been an hour-long video, mm. but it's a one-minute video, and we tried to quickly encompass in that video some of the very recent pledges of allegiance that you will find on the official Facebook page of the Riser of Asadik. We've put together some of the recent ones, and we'd like to show you the faces of our new brothers and sisters. Let's go ahead and check it out. <laughs> Şahadet ederim ki Ali ve evlatlarından olan imamlar Eşhedü enna aliyen ve emin temin I shall die in upon this I shall be resurrected Ve eşhedü enna al mehdi ve al mehdiyin Sur cela je vais quitter ce monde et sur cela je serai à nouveau de retour Doi testimonio de que Muhammad es su siervo y mensajero I bear witness that there is no God worthy to be worshipped Except Allah. Except Allah. Except Allah. Except Allah. Except Allah. Allah. Upon this I shall live, upon this I shall die, and upon this I shall be resurrected again. Upon this I shall live, and upon this I shall die. God bless those beautiful faces of our brothers and sisters, our global family that took the courage to put aside everything that they were told they should believe in and decided that God came first and raised the banner of allegiance is to God, a revolutionary act of courage in a day and time such as the one we're living in now. Yes, and uh, congratulations for your oath of allegiance to the man and messenger of God in this day and age, the Qaim of the family of Muhammad. Uh, congratulations for recognizing the truth that he uh, is the vessel of the Holy Spirit in this time. And um, it was so refreshing and so uh, brought so much joy to my heart to see all these different nations being represented and all these different faces. Uh, and uh, like Ali has said, the clip was only one minute long, but it could have gone on for many, many uh, more minutes than that. Yeah, there are many, many hours easily. Right? Yes. And many hours. And every day we're seeing more and more on Facebook, on YouTube, on all the different various platforms, people coming forward with courage, raising their hand and swearing allegiance to the Qaim of the family of Muhammad. Congratulations. Yes, well done in a time where, where God had said to the people, who is there to support me? You answered. And many, like the brothers and sisters you saw out there, um, are answering every day and this is such a critical time we're living in uh, it's a time to be brave if we want to see change if we want to make the world better we have to start being a bit more brave we have to start opening our minds a bit more reading the books a bit more challenging old ideas and uh, don't feel like the status quo is the right way to go every time it it doesn't have to be and usually it isn't especially now um, the sister that we were speaking to earlier who was testifying to her journey towards god she said something that's actually a very heavy matter, which is that we believe in our teachings that the world is actually not the, the physical world, is not the direct creation of God, rather it was Satan himself who was inspired to create the physical. And mm. that is a great indication towards why things are the way they are exactly. right now. Exactly. The, the question you often get posed in these discussions uh, with atheists, I remember I had it uh, mm. at school, they would say to me, why do you believe in God? I mean, if uh, there is a God, then why is there so much evil in the world? And I, at that time, of course, I didn't have an answer to it. Uh, but the answers are in the goal of the wise, the gospel of the kind of the family of Muhammad yes. uh, that you can download for free from our website. Uh, it is a tremendous read. It is full of gems of wisdom. And we highly encourage you to uh, read this book and then call us, ask us questions about what has been presented before your eyes and let's have a discussion. Uh, the number is in front of you and it's on the screen. You can reach us through WhatsApp, you can reach us through Telegram and you can call us in through Skype. So uh, pick up that phone, get dialing, take action because action is what changes lives. Now there was a time where we, um, a lot of our lives changed 
through our history in this call and in this religion. Uh, the, the members of the, the community that are around Abu Sadiq from Him is Peace, the members are growing in number. And uh, there was a time, and we've discussed some of our history before in previous episodes, where we've talked about how the community began as one man, one individual who stood on the plains of Egypt. And like his forefathers before him, like Imam Hussein in Karbala, he said, is there anyone who will come to my help? Is there anyone who will come to my aid? Yeah. And sure enough, there were people in different countries who heard Abu Sadiq calling to Imam Mehdi calling the people towards him and they ran to him and they rushed to him through the clouds in the sky and they found him and they lived with him and we saw, we saw in everything he did that this is a man of God. And it was soon after that that the black banners were raised, that it was made clear by Imam Ahmed al-Hassan, the Yamani, that Abu Sadiq from him peace is indeed the qaim of the family of Muhammad and Abdullah who is mentioned in the will. And it was from that point on that an exodus took place from Egypt a headquarters had been established in Germany. Later, it had been established in Sweden after a channel had been opened for the Middle East and North Africa to be made aware of the call of Imam Mahdi. And now, here we are in the United Kingdom. And in this phase where we have been established as a headquarters in the United Kingdom, so much has happened. So many milestones have been reached. So many breakthroughs have been seen. We'd love to take you through a quick uh, glimpse of what we have been able to accomplish, some of what we have been able to accomplish, and we'd love to have that discussion. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, see what it is that we've reached. In 2021, the call took a major step forward with the establishment of a new headquarters in the United Kingdom. This marked the beginning of a new phase for the Ahmadi religion of peace and light, expanding its presence in Europe and preparing to unite more brothers and sisters from across the globe. The movement's focus shifted towards a stronger media presence and reaching new followers worldwide. Responding to the Imam of the Times call, believers began to migrate towards this new centre, contributing to the growth and development of the call in this new land. Believers from all corners of the globe gathered in the UK, strengthening the movement and supporting the mission of spreading peace and light. The Ansar of Imam Ahmad al Hassan from Him is Peace continued to work tirelessly to spread the message of the Saviour of Mankind, striving to bring hope and unity to all of humanity. This chapter was crucial for the advancement of the mission as it brought together even more dedicated followers who were committed to the cause. On December 24th, 2022, the Holy Gospel, The Goal of the Wise, was released by Abba al Sadiq from Him is Peace, creating waves of astonishment around the world. This sacred text resonated deeply with believers, leading many to pledge their allegiance to the Qa'im Abba al Sadiq from Him is Peace. However, as the movement gained momentum, its members in Middle Eastern countries began to face severe persecution from government authorities, religious scholars, and civilians. This marked a difficult time for many followers as they endured significant challenges and threats to their lives and livelihoods, standing firm in their faith. On May 24, 2023, members of the Ahmadi religion of peace and light faced even greater hardships as they attempted to cross the Turkish-Bulgarian border in search of asylum. Having suffered horrific persecution in their home countries, these believers, men, women and children, faced illegal pushback and were detained in inhumane conditions in Turkish detainment centres. The situation garnered international attention with human rights organisations and UN human rights experts speaking out against the illegal and unjust treatment of these individuals. This incident highlighted the desperate plight of the persecuted believers who sought safety and a new life free from oppression. Abba al Sadiq from Him is Peace launched an enlightening lecture series titled The School of Divine Mysteries. This series drew in followers from all over the world who eagerly joined this online school to hear the profound teachings of Abba al Sadiq from Him is Peace. Through these lectures, he shared his knowledge of divine mysteries guiding people towards spiritual growth and understanding. This series is widely followed as more individuals are drawn to his wisdom and teachings, further strengthening the mission and spreading the message of the Ahmadi religion of peace and light. In October 2023, a significant victory was achieved when Turkish courts accepted the appeal of the persecuted believers and declared their previous detention unlawful. The courts recognised the innocence of the believers and the unjust nature of their imprisonment. This ruling was a pivotal moment for the persecuted followers of the Ahmadi religion of peace and light 
as it restored their freedom and allowed them to continue their search for safety and refuge. This triumph further fueled the movement's mission and gave hope to believers facing persecution worldwide. As of today, the Ahmadi religion of peace and light is now recognised in the United Kingdom as a registered religion with charity status, supported by over 20 human rights organisations as well as United Nations Human Rights Special Rapporteurs. We are officially a people with the right to practise and preach our religion. On September the 21st, 2024, the highly anticipated manifesto of the Mehdi was released, authored by the riser Abdullah Hashim Abba al Sadiq from Whom is Peace. This manifesto outlined the goals, ambitions and mission of the Mehdi for the world. It served as a guiding document for the Ahmadi religion of peace and light, shedding light on the spiritual and societal changes that the Mehdi sought to bring forth. Translated into several languages, the manifesto was made accessible to believers and seekers around the globe, allowing them to understand and embrace the vision of the saviour of mankind. The full text is available on the official website for all to read and reflect upon, marking a new chapter in the global movement. This milestone in the Blessed Call further solidified the importance of the Mehdi's mission and inspired even more individuals to join the cause for peace and light. That was a very uh, fascinating and beautiful outline of some of the achievements that we have seen and been fortunate enough to witness and be part of and be blessed by uh, in our current phase of being in the United Kingdom and what great milestones they are because if you take even one of them that have been mentioned right there uh, and you think about the time that was taken to accomplish that, the effort, the resources, uh, the amount of love that was poured into each and every uh, part of the work, it, um, it is extremely, uh, extremely enlightening because you realize God truly is with us. He truly is enforcing us. I mean, a great example is the publication of the, the publishing of the Goal of the Wise. Yes, what a huge accomplishment. That in itself is such a massive accomplishment. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Abbasadik is a, like a great tree that bears fruit uh, in all seasons, evergreen, and the list of accomplishments that were reeled off in that video, alhamdulillah, uh, by the grace and mercy of God, uh, I think is proof enough that this individual who has gathered around him uh, such loyal, uh, devoted companions who work uh, in his example night and day is just testament to the fact that he is the proof of God in this time. And I believe we have another caller on. We do. We have a caller, Muhammad Awaz from... Uh Nigeria? Hello, Salaam Alaikum. Hello, can you hear us? There's a bit of a delay, I think. Okay, so uh, we'll wait until he's back online and I guess yes. we carry on. So the the accomplishments of Abu Sadiq, he, it's like that um, verse in the Gospels where Jesus Christ says, I am the vine and you are the branches. And uh, the more connected to Abbas Sadiq you are, the more productive you as an individual become. Mm -hmm. He is the energy, he is the sun that feeds uh, his flock. And all of these accomplishments that he has been at the helm of have uh, uh, really taken this call to that next level. And he is always pushing the bar higher. And as every great leader does, he raises the standards and he demands more and more from uh, all those who follow in his footsteps and it's not easy to keep up with him because he <laughs> is a relentless worker by day and by night and his primary concern is the welfare of humanity and uh, what he has done uh, in conjunction with a few of the Ansar in terms of those being persecuted around the world yes, uh, involving absolutely. 20 NGOs, different organizations that are shedding lights on the human rights abuses of people who do nothing more than raise the banner of allegiances to God has been, uh, it's, it's another breathtaking example of his care, concern and dedication to the weak, the oppressed uh, in, in the land and he really is in the same way as his forefather Imam Hussein, uh, waving the banner for uh, the people to whom he dedicates his manifesto. Um, at, on the very, very beginning of the manifesto, you see the, uh, the acronym that spells power, 
and he addresses, of course, the poor, the widow, the orphan, and all of those people who are marginalized and neglected in society. Uh, these people are actually at the forefront of his mm -hmm. mind, and uh, he teaches us to really, really um, push ourselves to the absolute limits of our capabilities to help mankind and to heal the world of its ills. Absolutely. So. No, I think that um, the fact that we had so many cases of believers around the world who were being persecuted in such terrible ways uh, only to have to seek asylum and uh, seek refuge really by trying to cross the border uh, legally, uh, the Turkish-Bulgarian border. Uh, this was quite an event that took place and it was so life-changing for all of us, for the entire global family uh, of believers, of brothers and sisters in Abbas Sadiq. Uh, this believing family that experienced and witnessed that event where uh, over a hundred men, women and children were seeking asylum and trying to cross that border and doing so in legal ways, doing so with the with the support of over 20 human rights organizations who had vouched for them and written that letter, co-signed that letter so that the people would know that indeed these men, women and children are innocent and they are legally seeking their human right to, to refuge. And uh, for them to have been treated the way they were and rejected the way they were, it really opened, um, it, it kind of shed a light on how it is that things work uh, in these broken systems, but it also gave courage to the entire global community of Abbas Sadiq because we all saw that when you believe in God and you stand by him and you support him and his cause, he doesn't let you down. And indeed, after their detainment, they were actually released and the Turkish court had to back off and say they must be released because indeed they broke no laws. Uh, the United Nations were actually behind them. S uh, reports were being made or statements were being addressed concerning what had happened by Cap Freedom of Conscience, by Human Rights Without Frontiers at various sessions uh, of the UN. Special rapporteurs of the UN were speaking out and saying that this is wrong, this cannot be accepted. We saw so much, so, so an outpouring of support from, from various parts of the world and it was, it was, it was honestly quite, a, quite an experience, it really was. And it changed uh, the course of this call and religion and it took it to the, the next level mm. where the people were speaking about it and uh, addressing what's really going on. And that's quite important. We, we are people who believe in standing for your rights and voicing what you believe in mm. and not being afraid of whatever might happen. So a lot has been seen in this in this phase, uh, including also, of course, as you mentioned, Dr. Fanda Mehdi's manifesto. What a great uh, time in our history that a manifesto of that nature, a unique manifesto of that nature, a manifesto from God himself, for the first time in history, has been released and actually um, it's being taught now to the people and they're reading it and they're trying to understand what is the better way of the Mahdi. Yeah, and um, th there is so much more to add. I mean, I don't have uh, an atom's weight of doubt that if Abbas Sadiq gets the support from enough people that this man will change the world. Yes. We've seen it now so many times. We've seen <laughs> things pulled off that you cannot imagine in your wildest dreams. And it happens, by the way, on a regular basis. We're so used to it now. It's just part of our lives. Right. <laughs> the, the only thing limiting is the support. And if the people were to obey the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad Wale, that we all love and revere and adore and admire, if we only acted on his words, if we only lived by the statement Muhammad Rasulullah, well then he himself said, get to him by any means necessary, which is what is implied by the statement crawling over ice. Mm. Do whatever it takes to reach him and give him your allegiance because in this man's uh, leadership lies your salvation, my salvation all of the other human beings who are suffering in this world from all of the ills that we have talked about already on the show. Yes. Abba Sadiq is the one that can change the world. Support him. And I think we have somebody on we the line. We have someone on the, on the line on right the now. Hello? Hello? Can you hear us? Hello, brother? It looks like there's a technical issue there again. We can't hear anyone on the line. Yes, I think that there is an audio issue because there is no voice reach reaching us from the other side. Okay, call got disconnected, no worries. Uh, hopefully they return. 
but yeah, this is this is it, guys. We are we're seeing change happening every day. We're seeing people coming in every day. We're seeing uh, the 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 train is running pretty fast now. Don't don't take too long to jump on because a point will come where it won't be possible to jump onto that train. It's going at a very very high speed. Yes. Let's not get left behind. The the there are many applications and a few seats and. Uh... Uh, uh, like uh, any kind of uh, amazing institution, and this is the best institution in the world. Uh, uh, you know, there are people trying to call us right now, don't give up, keep trying. Uh, of course, these technical issues happen, but we want people to call, we want people to discuss. Let the Spirit be a forum and a platform of discussion, the exchange of ideas. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, if you are watching us right now, pick up that phone. Dialed like Brother Muhammad from Brooklyn, all the way from Brooklyn. And he asked some very intriguing and interesting questions. This brought information to the surface that then allowed him to reflect back on things that he is familiar with from the Islamic tradition that supports the view of the guy of the family of Muhammad and his teachings. So be like that. Pick up the phone. Be brave. Let's talk. Um, we are all students of knowledge. We are all students of Abbas Sadiq. There is no such thing as a silly question or a stupid question. Every question that you have, you should ask it. And this has been the, the, the method and the encouragement of all the prophets and the messengers. Yes, These indeed. questions lead to answers. Answers lead to salvation. And uh, speaking of salvation, part of salvation is to recognize the greatness of God and yes. the wonders that come from him. Uh, and we see those wonders uh, right before our eyes. We see them uh, in this realm with great amazement because they are usually not the norm. They defy the laws of nature itself. And I'm talking now about miracles yes. that are that are seen by the messenger of God. And in this day and age, the spirit of God, which is within Abu Sadiq, is uh, very renowned in our community uh, to be that that miraculous force. Uh, but before we get to the miracles, it's possible that there is a caller on the line and we can hear them this time. So let's check it out. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, brother. Great to hear your voice. I How are you, I think we just Muhammad? witnessed another miracle. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of miracles. Yeah. Assalamu <laughs> alaikum. Can you hear me? Wa alaikum salam. We can hear you loud and clear. Can you hear us? Yeah, yeah. The moment I turn on the video, the video camera, that is how, that is when uh, the signal will get lost. Oh, I see. So I don't know if we can just do it via, via audio. Let's it do it be via better. audio. Let's That's do... absolutely fine. Yes, why not? Yeah, so Alhamdulillah. How are you all there? We are extremely happy to be talking to you. We're happy and honored that you are sharing the platform with us. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. Hello. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Good. I was saying, please, can you tell us a little yeah. bit about yourself? Hello, please come again. The voice, your voice is shaking. Yes, somehow. no, brother, we're just saying, uh, could you tell us a bit about yourself, your name, where you're from? Yeah. All right. Firstly, uh, my name is Muhammad Awal Ibrahim. I'm from Nigeria. That is uh, a state of uh, Plateau State. Okay. From well, just north. welcome to the show, brother Muhammad from Nigeria. Yes. Hello. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. We can hear you. Hello? Hello? Brother Muhammad? Naam, Naam, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. We yes. can hear you. Go ahead, brother. Please say your piece. Yeah, my name is Muhammad Awal Ibrahim. And I'm from Nigeria. Yeah, I'm from Nigeria, yes. From uh, Plateau States. And uh, what is and your... Yes, go on. Yes, from Plateau State. That is uh, just not a capital city of the of the state. Okay. Just north. So tell us about about why you're calling in. Nam. Tell us about why you're calling in. All right. Yeah, I have uh, supposed to have a meeting with you yesterday. Yes, you wanted to call uh, us yesterday. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You told me that uh, we should have uh, at least time. That is, we have to meet at uh, by 11 a.m., right? Yes. And here we are. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I really wanted to talk to you that, uh, yeah, it is uh, tomorrow or Saturday that I'm traveling back to my hometown. That is Plateau State there, where I'm supposed to uh, sit with the scholars from various faiths. To okay. convey the message and call of the uh, of Abbasadik, I know that 
definitely they don't know anything about it. So I will need to go there and sit with them from the uh, Sufi order, the Sunni, and even the Christian wow. uh, reverends and pastors there. So to convey the message and then have a video clip on that. That is amazing. So you're going to be addressing some scholars of different religions in a conference and presenting to them the call of Abba Sadiq, correct? Okay. That is, yes, yes. Even if it is not uh, in a conference, but I will have to meet them in their, uh, at home, maybe at home or wherever they are. So re we will arrange the sitting with them. I'll That's amazing, brother. Sitting. That is brilliant. God bless you for doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So that is why I wrote to you yesterday because uh, now I'm, I'm in Abuja, FCT Abuja. That is where I'm working. Mm. So the place I'm living, there are no such, uh, only friends there that we talk about it. So I needed to go back there because I have a break. So I will take the advantage of, uh, of the break and go there, talk with them, and then hear from them. Well, that's really exciting. Place. That's really exciting news. And, and we're happy that you're doing that because I think that it's necessary to go out there and talk to people, isn't it? And actually interact with them. Hello, Salaam Alaikum. Yes, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. So I think it's quite important yeah. what you're doing. It's really necessary. Um, we know that you're from Nigeria, brother, and there's a lot going on there right now. What is the state of the country at the moment? Yeah, the state of the country, the, definitely the country is, uh, is, quite, what is that? It's quite unstable. It's quite unstable when it comes to financial and because there is a very high rate of living. There's insecurity. There are a lot of things that is going on in the country, mm -hmm. that uh, this will be, uh, it, it, could be, it can be an episode that we can talk about it. Yeah, we can talk about it now. You're live with us here on TV. We'd love to hear it. People are kind of, they are not happy seriously with the, what is going on with the government. Just uh, not even a year, not even a year. Brother, can you speak uh, closer to the, the mic so we can hear your voice? It's just gone low all of a sudden. All uh, people really, really want in life is to, have a, is, to have a, is to have something that can accommodate their lives. Brother Muhammad? Can hear me? Yes, but can you talk closer to the mic so your voice Hello? has gone low? Assalamu alaikum. Hello? That's better. Much Go better. ahead. Hello? Yes, speak, brother. Wa alaikum yeah. salam. Yes. Yeah. What people really, really want is to have something that can accommodate their life, their lives, right? Yes. So that they can live their life moderately and without any, uh, without uh, extravagant extravagancy in their lives. Mm. So things have gone wild. People don't know what to do. There are a lot of chaos. There are a lot of lack. There's 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 lack of order in the country. Mm. And everyone, every, every person there is just doing what he what he wants. The government isn't really, really functioning. So, uh, as I said, it can be an episode where we can uh, talk about it and expand the uh, the topic. To we would love what, uh, to. We would love to hear from you. Up, we would love to hear from you about this. You know, mm. for the people, a way out for the people. No, absolutely. Wa alaikum salam. No, we would love to hear from you, brother, about this more. And um, we're happy that you actually took the time to call in and discuss it with us. Thank you, brother Mohammed. All right. So would you like to share anything else in this in this phone call? Yeah, the all yeah, the main thing I really want to talk to you is about the calling. It's about the call first. We I really wanted to compare the call, then get back to you or then we get that we get that you get the feedback from me whatever the school because the scholars are the one controlling the the masses mm. in all in every faith in the country yes they are the ones controlling whatever they say that is what the people would do because mm. they are the one leading the people to election doing election and voting for the presidents and other uh you know other candidates for governorship and all these political positions yes so the scholars are the one behind this. So we really, really need to talk to them and then introduce the call. Well, that's amazing. The Brother the Muhammad, the we're excited to hear how it goes. So this do is keep... What, yeah, this is what I really, really want to share for now. You have to the, call back when you're done and tell us how it went. We're excited to hear the updates, okay?
Hello? Naam, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. I said that you have to call us again when you have done this conversation with the scholars and let us know how it went. We are excited. Inshallah. So inshallah, I will do that. Inshallah, Good. brother. God bless you. Thank you for calling us. Take care. Thank you. Very, thank you very much. Thank you, Muhammad. Salam mm. alaikum. It's really uh, amazing. These people, the, their, their spirit drives them to confront, go into the belly of the beast. Yes. Uh, the people who, as Brother Muhammad said, in Nigeria, the scholars are controlling the hearts and minds of the people. Mm. And they are a disease in the land. And they are the biggest block that is on the journey to God and his yes. messenger. It is always the case. And as Brother Muhammad testifies in Nigeria, very much so in play uh, over there as well. So uh, for all those who listen to Brother Muhammad, agree with what he's saying or have similar stories, pick up the phone and call us and tell us about your journey and your experiences uh, with the non-working scholars of this day and age. Um, I think the more the more that we expose them, mm. uh, the better. And it, because they really are that, that idol of misguidance that needs to be smashed as our beloved prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, did. We must follow in his examples. They must be confronted and they must be exposed. So let's carry on that tradition of the prophets and the messengers. And I would really like to thank Brother Muhammad for making that uh, great step in the right direction. As someone who uh, believes in the rise of Abbasadik, he has been wanting to confront these men that he has testified to right now are controlling the masses and controlling their minds and not allowing them to breathe despite the terrible atrocities happening in the country of Nigeria. They are the, the puppeteers, so to speak, at the very top. And um, as someone who believes in the truth, Muhammad has had enough of it and he's saying he's going to go there, confront these scholars of Sufism and Sunniism and Christianity and the ones who have believed that they have divine authority when they do not have it. And he wants to confront them with the truth, the manifesto, the call of Abba Sadiq. So hats off to you, Muhammad. Um, great step in the right direction. And I am very excited to hear the result of that. I'm sure yes, it'll be very Please do call us back like uh, you said you would and we look forward to hearing from you. Absolutely. Um, now, we were about to head towards an interesting miracle that took place once. We have another caller on the phone. Okay, the miracle is... Okay, so we're going to wait for a few minutes because I think we're going to be uh, getting another call. There's someone on the line and they're just connecting them to us now. It does take a couple of minutes sometimes to make sure that the audio is working, etc. But um, yes, I hope that there's a lot of suspense growing for mm. that miracle because it's actually one of the greatest ones that we witnessed uh, through the riser of a Sadiq. Um, I'm wondering who's on the call. Quite excited. Yes, so uh, this, this is a good flood that's coming. It's always coming. you. Every time Dr. Fan says, uh, give us a call. <laughs> we have Muhammad Asman from America, Ohio. Okay then, Salam Alaikum. A lot of Muhammads today. Yes. <laughs> Salam Alaikum, brother. Hello, can you hear us? Brother Muhammad from Ohio, USA. How are you? Oh, we can hear you, but it's a bit faint. Can you come closer to the, to the mic? Hello? That's it's a, better. It's a bit better there, yeah. How are you? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa alaikum salam, salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brother. Oh, the voice is breaking up. Is it? Can you hear us? We can hear you pretty much okay. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Yes, can you? So, brother, you called in. Can you tell us more about yourself and why you called? My name is Muhammad, Muhammad Usman. I am in United States, Columbus, Ohio. Mm -hmm. I was really looking forward to hear from you guys. Well, we'd love to talk to you. What would you like to talk about? I was being coming since yesterday and I couldn't get you. I was needed to talk to you about the third man Oh, please do pledge your allegiance. We'd love to hear that. Yeah, I took my allegiance myself, but not with your face, with myself, my heart. Well, now you can do it live on satellite television and let the whole world witness uh, your pledge. And I also carry the allegiance of my mom too. Subhanallah, God bless her. Yes, and she also sent a greet for me all those Brothers and family and my father are blessed. Alhamdulillah, well, brother. God bless you. love and greetings to you and your blessed mother. 
Allah I'm taking the religion. Please do. I go with the Islam, there is no God but Allah. And I bear witness that the Muhammad is his messenger of Allah. And I bear witness Ali and his sons of the Imams are the proofs of Allah. And I bear witness that the Mahdi and the Mahdi's are the proofs of Allah. Upon these I shall live. Upon this I shall die, and upon this I will be raised up again, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Congratulations, my beloved brother. MashaAllah. Well done, brother. What a great step you took, and God is indeed great who has guided you here through your sincerity, through your love for the truth, and we are so honored to have you as part of our believing family, you and your blessed mother. God bless you both. I cannot hear what you're saying. Your voice is breaking up. Oh, we're saying thank you for doing this. <laughs> you know, I was watching a movie from uh, YouTube. You're watching from YouTube, yes, yes. So while I was watching YouTube videos, you know, American videos, you know, fighting and stuff, you know, all movies, I wasn't watching Abbasadik and then Abbasadik just popped up. Subhanallah. <laughs> he does that. He tends to come up suddenly in people's lives and bring them to God. He was saying that the Mahdi has appeared. Yes, indeed he has. And I was like, really? The Mahdi has appeared. And then I started listening and watching. His word is my God. Yes. And I was like, you start keep watching and watching and watching. Now I must keep going. And then his work is public. Where he said, See, uh, Omar, Abu Bakr, Osman, and then uh, the son of Muhammad. Yes. When he said the Muslim by bowing down for idols, and I was spending all my life, my parents they were training me to pray, and I didn't know I was watching idols. Yes. I was been crying for three days. Subhanallah. And I was like, I didn't know parents would treat me like that. And I said, now on, I am not with you. Wow. I take my allegiance to Abu Bakr. Alhamdulillah, brother. I say to them, we argue between me and my dad. And I tell him, you told me about the Mahdi will come. Now I have seen his message, he appeared. <laughs> yes. Why are you not following him? Amazing. My dad, he said, I didn't see him yet. I am my father, I see him. And I said, you have to serve a little amount you can. We have to try to see him. Yes. And he said, I am ill person, I cannot go and see him. And I said, you have to go even if you can have more. This is a. Uh, I said I will find somebody who can help you take the responsibility. But me, I'm going to join my brothers and my father. Hmm. My mom, she cried out. But my dad, he said, I will find someone to help me when you leave. Hmm. And I say, you have to say, I am traveling. I'm going to join. My spirit brother and my father. Brother, you're invited, you're welcome, and everyone is invited to join the flock of the true shepherd of Sadiq. And we're so happy to hear that you have had that journey and that you found what you were looking for. I did find. Alhamdulillah. That's amazing. I, the, the thing is, I have one more issue. Yes. 
My wife, they came, came with me. Hmm. And I was needing all my family to join together mm. to Abbasabi. Yes. Uh, but the thing is, we are arguing. And I said, even myself, I will live a life to join him. That means if you disagree with me, you are not my family. I'm going to my family. Hmm. I'm really sorry, brother. I'm sorry that yes. you've had that experience, but um, we're here for you. And uh, uh, if, if you would like, we can actually, um, our outreach team here in the studio would love to take your phone number and we can get in touch with you and talk to you more in depth about your-, your... voice is breaking up. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, but your voice is shaking. I said we can, take, we can take your phone number and actually talk to you one-on-one -on -one about how to handle those difficult uh, situations that you're in. It can, be, it can be difficult when you find the truth, but we're here for you. Yeah, and I talk to my parents, because when you find the truth, you will become the enemies the first time, because Basadi also said that. Yes, exactly. It, I said, it's not only you. I said, you remember you watch, I turn on a video that about the story about uh, Prophet Muhammad, because whenever whenever he was trying to tell something to the people, the children follow, the elderly don't follow. Yes. This is correct. SubhanAllah. And they create war against him. Including their, his uncles, even some of them, they died with the sword. Yes. And I said, I'm the same like that. Even if you fight with me, I'm ready for it. I'm going to my father. And that's how it should be. We should do whatever it takes to reach God and to reach His Messenger. So you're on the right track. You've, you've got your mind in the right place. Uh, and, and, and who I'm talking today, I, I was been honored to hear your voices. And who am I talking today? Uh, you are talking to uh, two of the companions of Abu Sadiq, uh, two can, servants of I yours who you. would like to help you in every way. Hello? Yes, brother. I think there's a connection issue. I said we are your servants and your brother and sister and, your, and the companions of Abu Sadiq, and we're here to help you however we can. Uh, connection problem. We'll get in touch with you, brother Muhammad. We'll take your number and we'll call you, okay? Hello, my sister. Yes, brother. I said we will, we will take your phone number and we'll call you back again, okay? Can you repeat that? Oh, I said that we'd love to get in touch with you, so we'll call you again after the show. Your voice is breaking up. Yeah, I think and control uh, room yes. maybe has to convey I think convey we have it. an issue with the line. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me, uh, Brother Muhammad, but... Uh, you clearly. You can hear me clearly? Okay, we'll, we'll be in touch oh. after the show. We'll, we'll call you back. Thank you so I much for calling us, brother. God bless you, Brother Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. Good. That uh, uh, Pledge of Allegiance, subhanAllah, towards the Qaim, to Abu Sadiq, and uh, it's, uh, that's what we're saying. We're saying that the list of people who believe in him is increasing, it's growing, and we can see it happening live on television here, before our very eyes. It's the turn of the tide. It's the uh, gathering of the people to the Qaim, like the clouds of the sky. Uh, lots of Muhammads today. Lots of Muhammads. It's very fascinating. <laughs> and uh, more to come. Uh, whether your name is yeah. Muhammad... Or your name is uh, Andrew, Andrew, John, Peter, or whatever it might be. Whatever it might be, you're welcome. This is the, the doors are open to one and all. There's no judgment. There's only love. There's only mercy. Uh, these are the attributes of God that attract people to the Ark of Salvation, which in this time is Abu Sadiq, the riser of the family of Muhammad. Uh, I'm really glad to hear the people are responding uh, to the call of God uh, by picking up a phone and dialing a few numbers and getting in touch because this is what is necessary at this stage and everyone who joins the uh, the bandwagon they have to use all of their faith and resources to help the kind to build the divine just state that we all want our children to grow up in and for society to change it needs all of us coming together uniting uh, in brotherhood and in the uh, submission to the statement that there is no God but God and Muhammad is the messenger of God 
and uh, the successor of the Prophet Muhammad, the Riser, Abbas Sadiq, is the one holding the banner of truth aloft in this day and age. And you are all welcome to come join, give your allegiance and find salvation and freedom through it. Okay, so we've got a caller on the line right now. We have Sister Sophia from Wolverhampton. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, Sister Alia. How are you, Sophia? How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm great. It's good to hear back from you. How's it going? It's going okay. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Ifan. Wa alaikum salam, Sister Sophia. It's nice to hear your voice. How are you doing today? Finally. Yes. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, Sister Ali had asked me to call in. Um, yes. I have a testimony also. Yes, so Sister Sophia, just for the viewers, she has an incredible testimony and I really wanted everyone to hear about it. So I'd asked her if she could actually come on the line and, and share it with us. And I'm so <laughs> delighted that you did so, Sister. Please go ahead. So um, what's happened is, you know that I suffer with sciatic arthritis. I have done for a very long time and... Beginning of September, I had a really bad relapse. Uh, the medication stopped working and uh, I had to go for a blood test and they cancelled, the hospital cancelled my prescription. So I'm not on medication currently mm. at all. And I was really, really down, upset, and I was in a lot of pain because I've got it mainly in my hands and in my feet. And I, can't, I couldn't do anything because of the swelling and I had severe pain excruciating pain in my hands um, and they were basically crippled. You've got the pictures, Sister Alia, you know yes. exactly how bad they went. Yes, it was very sad to and, see that. Uh, yeah, I spoke to you, didn't I? Mm. And I told you exactly what was happening with me and you had uh, said to me that you were going to speak to Brother Irfan. Yes, I did. And see if he can recommend something for me. Well, uh, you actually spoke to Abbas Sadiq, didn't you? I did. Exactly that had happened. I had intended to speak to Dr. Irfan, but Providence had it that instead Abbas Sadiq from Hemis Peace himself asked me about you and I wanted to tell wow. him your situation. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you, you, you told me and we had this conversation and then you told me of the remedy that Abbas Sadiq gave you. Yes. For me. And... Uh, what happened next is quite amazing because after that conversation, um, within 40 minutes of that conversation, I actually managed to open up my right hand. This was a hand that was completely limp. It was stiff. I couldn't move my fingers. I was in pain. And within 14 minutes of that conversation that I had with you, I haven't started the remedy yet. My hand opened up. The pain was gone. Yeah, it's quite remarkable, isn't it? And then I tried that it? with my I'm... left hand. Yes, you, you, you of course had a very severe form of arthritis. My left hand started moving. I could feel it clicking. I could feel my bones clicking. I was really scared, thinking, oh, my God, I haven't fractured anything, have I? What's going <laughs> on? And I could move my hands. They were sore, but that pain was gone. SubhanAllah. And I don't understand how that happened because I'm not on any medication, right? I've just spoken to you and you told me what Abbas Sadiq said and you told me of the remedy and I and I said, yeah, I'm going to get what I need to get together and I'm going to start this remedy tomorrow. And that's what happened. That's the first shocking point for me. The second was that the remedy that was given, I used that for three mm -hmm. days and within the first night, there was a significant difference in the swelling, the fact that my right hand had completely gone straight Wow. And I've documented all this. So I've got video proof. I've got evidence. That's amazing. That how, how that's helped me. And I just wanted to share that with everybody. Beautiful. That I could not believe that within three days, there was a significant difference in my hands with that remedy. And I've been using that uh, consistently now. And there is a massive improvement in my hands and in my feet. So, yeah, so that's wonderful what I to wanted hear. to share. So, so incredibly wonderful to hear and so great is the glory of God. Uh, I believe, and Dr. Irfan can correct me if I'm wrong, this is Hello? a case. Can you hear us, sister? Hello? 
This is a case of psoriatic arthritis, correct? Hello? Yes. Can you hear us, sister? Uh, the okay. connection is a little bit tricky no there. Problem. I think we, we dropped the call there, but I hope that she calls back because what an incredible miracle. No yes, problem. I hope that Sophia calls us back. But psoriatic arthritis, uh, extremely painful condition. You can tell us more about it, Dr. Rufan. Yes, yeah, so if you've been diagnosed with psoriasis uh, and the psoriasis progresses, it can actually uh, trigger off an inflammation in the joints of the hand and it can cause your hands to become completely deformed uh, as, uh, for example, in this position like this where the hand is all contracted inwards and it's very stiff and there's swelling and this pain in the joints. And what the sister Sophia was describing is that she was unable to open her hand but after her conversation with Sister Alia, in which Sister Alia told her that Abba Sadiq has heard your plight and he has given you this as a remedy, she was able to open her hand fully. And that in itself is quite astounding Hello? and remarkable. Hello, Sister. Can you hear us again? Salaam Alaikum. Hello? Connection's gone, That's right? So this this was miraculous, isn't it? I mean, have you ever heard of a, 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 a miraculous yes. remedy that would just immediately take the pain away? I think we were going to do a segment. We were just about to go into it, weren't we, before Medicine Sister Sophia Mahdi's, called? Yes. We were going to do uh, first a miracle and then Medicine of the Mahdi's. This and then two Sister in one, isn't it? <laughs> Sophia comes with a two-in-one uh, job uh, there for us. Uh, well, I've never seen a spontaneous remission of somebody with psoriatic arthritis, nor have I ever heard of a case of this where there is this, uh, the, the hand is contracted inwards and then it could, she spontaneously opens up without the administration of anything like strong corticosteroids, uh, strong uh, intramuscular, intravenous treatments that we give, which essentially uh, work by reducing inflammation in terms of rheumatologists, um, who I used to work in conjunction with and managing people with severe rheumatic disease. Mm. So it is really quite, and, and, she, and Sister said she has video evidence of the fact that before her hand was like this, I also uh, saw the pictures that Sister Alia sent to me and it looked like a really, really bad case of uh, inflammatory arthritis, uh, which is a very uh, crippling and painful condition. Yes. And as she was speaking, it reminded me of the scene where uh, in, in, the, in the temple where this man with a deformity in his hand and Jesus uh, touches him and instantaneously his hand opens up. So if those miracles are being done and professed to uh, in relationship to the Ka'im, then surely does he not have the same Holy Spirit that was wow. with Jesus enabling him to do the miracles that he was able to do. Absolutely. And uh, it's always amazing to hear from me as a medic um, this that there are ways that we can heal ourselves through our faith in God and his messenger, which precludes the need for aggressive medicines that come with a whole host of side effects that you want to avoid if possible. Um, it's really heartening to hear these stories. The caller is back. Sister Sophia, can you hear us now? Hopefully she can hear us now. Hello? Assalamu alaikum. Sometimes it takes a few seconds. Hello, Sister Sophia. Jump in whenever you can. Uh, I think I'm, I'm sure you can probably hear us, but we can't really catch your voice at the moment. So whenever you can, just uh, talk and we'll we'll get to you. Yes, it's amazing to hear about these medical miracles that so many people have talked about. We have presented to you on the show a woman who had a quintuple bypass operation with a less than 5% chance of survival. We've had Sister Sophia call in this morning and share the miracle that she experienced uh, through the time of the family of Muhammad with Sister Alia acting as a vessel. And through her faith in God and his messenger, she was healed instantaneously as well. And she is now beginning a course of treatment which boggles the mind, which is not in any medical textbook. It's such a safe method by which you can treat all kinds of inflammatory arthritis. And it's just knowledge that is, there's no origin to it. It's God's knowledge. It's divine. It really is it divine. It really is. And I think if any rheumatologist out there is watching, um, then sign up. You need to leave your job. 
You need to leave what you're doing and you need to start investigating the treatments of the crime of the family of Muhammad, the medicine of God in this day and age, and save a lot of grief and strife to your patients. We can hear you, Sophia. Thank God. I don't know what happened there. You're back. Thank goodness. We were missing you. How are you? Uh, I'm okay. How are you? We're good. We were just uh, marveling over the story and um, we're so honored that we got to experience that with you and witness it. And and we're so happy for you that in, in at the end of the day, Sophia, we believe this and Jesus himself said it. He said that it is by your faith that you can be healed. And it was your faith in the riser of a sadiq that actually that actually led you to that that treatment and to that relief that you felt. This is it. I mean, um, you're absolutely absolutely correct in, in what you're saying um but we've heard about intercession haven't we mm. we've read about intercession imams can intercede if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows it yes and abba Sadiq interceded for me i begged god for relief i was in so much pain i was crying it was that bad not being able to move your hands for daily tasks, little things to do, and I couldn't do it. Slightest knock, and I'd scream. That's how bad oh my hands and my wrists were. Um, I didn't have a doubt that the remedy wouldn't work. It's coming from Abu Sadiq. I didn't doubt it at all because he's from the Ahlul Bayt. There's no doubt. Uh, what shocked me was speaking to you and you giving me that message. And within an hour, my hands were moving. I haven't been able to move my hands for a week now. My hands, my fingers are moving. I can clench and I can unclench my fist. And they're sore, but they're not excruciatingly in pain where, where I'm going to cry or, you know, I'm going to scream because it's really bad. That's what shocked me. I have never spoken. Uh, with Abba Sadiq. I've never met Abba Sadiq. That's what was shocking for me. Mm. You know? Yes. Um, and if any, if I needed a confirmation, that was it. Beautiful. That's just strengthened what I already believe about him. He is the guy and he is the second Mehdi and he is the riser and the, he does come from the Ahlul Bayt and that's heavy. That That's massive. You know, absolutely. That is absolutely massive. And if one can understand that and hold on to that, and it's not just I asked for relief. And it wasn't just my physical pain that I had relief. It was also whatever anguish and whatever was going on inside of me. It's gone. Wow. I should be. I mean, I'm in a state. I'm not on any medication right now, apart from, um, you know, more paracetamol. And I have to wait till the end of the month to see a rheumatologist and see what's going to happen because I do have arthritis in other joints in my body. Um, but I should be feeling really down and depressed and I should be feeling really upset because that's that's my pattern and that's how I am because of the pain. I'm not. I'm not. Alhamdulillah. Something changed. It's hard to describe, but something's changed. It's faith, isn't it? It's the, it's the it's, taste it, it of faith. Is. It is. It's something otherworldly. I hold on to that. And, um, you know, I, it's like I said, it's not a surprise that he can. He has the ability to heal. He has the ability Amen. Um, to help people. If you are from Ahlul Bayt, that's, that's, that comes with it. Yes. Yes. And I think all those listening to your voice, sister, right now who are going through the same pain and trauma and strife in their life, what would you say to them? I would say to sit down and listen to what Abba Sadiq has to say, okay? Watch his podcast, mm. listen to him, read the goal of the wise, talk to his companions and really reflect on what's being said here. Mm -hmm. We are at a time where we're waiting for the 12th Ibam. This man, he has come as a representative from the 12th Imam, but he's not just an ordinary representative. He's his, he is his descendant as yes. well. So you need to hold on to him and put your faith and your trust in him, because that's what I did. I now have my complete faith and my complete trust in Abbasadik. 
There's no doubt about it. And not just because he's healed or he's helped me, but because what I was, what I, the confirmation that I needed, I got, I got that. And every time I listen to him, it strengthens me healing, me healing the pain. That's just an added confirmation that he's telling the truth. Yes. He is the Ka'im and he's here to help us. And we need to understand that and we need to join him and we need to support him in any way we can. That's what I'd like to say to everybody. God bless those very beautiful words. Uh, those very, very uh, beautiful words and that amazing testimony, Sister Sophia. Uh, thank you for calling in. Thank you so much for calling in and inspiring the people. And we hope to hear from you soon. Thank you for this opportunity, my dear sister. And you are my rock and my companion. <laughs> and I love you loads. And I cannot wait to speak to you again. We love you too. Take care, Sophia. God bless Brother you, sister. Salam alaikum. It was, an, it was a pleasure to hear from you and uh, hear your voice today. Thank you so much for calling. Thank you for this opportunity. Take care. Salam alaikum. That was Sister Sophia from the United Kingdom testifying to a miracle from Abu Sadiq. And we have unfortunately reached the end of our show for today. Uh, we had a lot more to go into, but it's fine because we're coming back again tomorrow morning and we will be here with you again at 10 o'clock tomorrow UK time. Until then, thank you for watching Rise Up and Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.